Good morning and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. I invite you to join me in the responsive call to worship printed in your bulletin. There is grace that every dawn renews, a loveliness making every morning fresh. We will endure, we will prevail, we the children of hope, children of the one who crowds the heavens with stars, endows the earth with glory, and fills the mind with wonder. Too often, we ignore the wonder of the world around us. We get wrapped up in worries and fail to experience the joy of life. What could be a greater sin than to miss the enjoyment of the life God gifts us? Let us confess our sin together. God of abundant blessings, you gift us with every good and perfect gift. Yet we find ourselves bored and disinterested in life. We expect to be entertained and amused. We seek distractions and diversions and call it living. We look on your creation and the life you have given us and declare it to be dull and tedious. Forgive us, creator God. Remove our cynicism and sarcasm. Renew in us the simple joys of life. Hear the good news. 
God hears our prayers for forgiveness and wipes away our transgressions. God locks away our sin, removing its power to instill guilt and shame. By God's grace made known in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to have you here. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church. For those of you at home, we're glad you're there too. Take a moment here in the sanctuary, give a spin around and wave to those nearby since we can't still shake hands. We are glad to have all of you here. For those of you in the sanctuary, take a moment and use the yellow slips that you find in the pew rack. Fill those out, if you will, please, and put them in the offering plate at the back. On your way out, we will know of your presence and give thanks to God for it. Just a few things to call to your attention. Lots of announcements on the green insert, so catch up on everything that's going on. Because of the Delta variant resurgence here in Vandenberg County and Evansville, we will not be allowed to eat together for a while longer. So the Presbyterian Women's Dinner Meeting has been postponed. We will not be able to have that on the 19th. We are going to have a gathering of people that would like to know more about the church. However, we won't be able to serve you dessert. So bring something nice, to cool, or hot along to drink, and uh, we will still have that gathering as listed in the bulletin. Finally, uh, this Friday evening uh, at the uh, Otters game, it's Ark Night, uh, the uh, Ark of Evansville. There you go, Lyd. Uh, Lydia receives services through Ark of Evansville, and if you would like to attend the game for free, let me know and I will get you tickets. For every ticket that is turned in, the Ark of Evansville receives some money. So I have already given away all the tickets that I had to give away this morning, but we can get more, and I will be happy to take that information. If you want to just write it on the yellow slip how many tickets you would like, I'll see that you get them. But uh, we hope that you'll be a part of that. There'll be a few Presbyterians there on Friday night, so that would not be a bad thing either. We're glad you're here. Let's continue with our worship of God. As our worship turns to the proclamation of the word, let us pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will be present to open our hearts and minds to a fuller understanding of the word and a clearer call to lives of faithfulness and discipleship. Come, Holy Spirit, and by your gentle power, open our hearts and minds to the fullness of God's word. Challenge us, encourage us, inspire us, lead us into new life. Amen. The psalm for the day is a responsive reading taken from Psalm 24. Please join me in declaring these words of celebration and praise. At all times I will bless the Lord, whose praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord, let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord, let us exalt the name of the Lord together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses the God-fearing, and the Lord will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in the Lord.
There are two lessons before us this morning, one from the book of Ecclesiastes, one from the book of Revelation. And they are connected, and I will leave you to figure out how. From Ecclesiastes, the words of the teacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What do people gain from all the toil at which they toil under the sun? A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south and goes around to the north. Round and round goes the wind, and on its circuits the wind returns. All streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they continue to flow. All things are wearisome, more than one can express. The eye is not satisfied with seeing or the ear filled with hearing. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. And from Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Glory be to God who gives us the word. May God write that word on our hearts and may God and God alone receive glory, honor, and praise. This week I went back to check the veracity of the statement I am about to make. Based on my research, I can truthfully say that I have never preached a back-to-school sermon in the 35 years of my ministry. I don't know why that is. Sloth, perhaps. So this is an auspicious moment for me, and perhaps for you. We'll see. I need to suggest that while it is a back-to-school sermon, it is for everyone. If you are going to pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, kindergarten, elementary school, middle school or high school, college, the graduate school of the University of Google Medical and Virology Department, or just postgraduate studies in the School of Hard Knocks, this sermon is for you. However, because I am a semi-retired youth pastor and a director of Christian education, I am inviting middle and high school students to pay particular attention. Let's begin by addressing our attention to the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, the only thing we know about the author of the book is that he or she was known as Koheleth. That is a Hebrew word that means teacher. Typically, we think of Koheleth as someone who has lived a long time and seen all that life has to offer. Koheleth has grown exhausted by life's changes and fluctuations. From his geezerly perspective, he offers us this observation. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Say what? The word we translate vanity is the Hebrew word hevel. More accurately translated, we might choose the words absurdity, meaninglessness, or vapor. Everything, including life, says Koheleth, is meaningless and pointless. Stay with me. Koheleth then summarizes his observation with these words. What has been is what will be. And what has been done is what will be done. 
There is nothing new under the sun. This is where I can imagine Koheleth feeling like a teenager. Teens and preteens have excellent powers of observation. You look at the world around you and you see its foolishness. You notice the silly and the strange. Truth be told, the adults around you do the same thing. The danger is falling into cynicism. Cynicism is marked by pessimism, doubt, and hopelessness. You can hear a bit of it when you might hear someone say, this is so boring. Or, I don't know why we have to study science. I'll never use it when I get out of school. Or when asked what a favorite thing about school is, the answer comes back, recess. Or when the highlight of your day is a TikTok that a friend sends you. Moments like that are Koheleth moments. Grown-ups have them too. Nothing ever goes right for me, you'll hear them say. Or I can't believe how much that costs. Or I don't understand how anyone can be that stupid. If none of that sounds familiar, they sometimes put bumper stickers on their car that says, same stuff, different day. There is nothing new under the sun. We are easily bored. We are easily disinterested. We become jaded and jaundiced. Then we become judgmental. Then we move on to being hypercritical, and then we become bitter. So let me offer a few suggestions. First, when you read on in Ecclesiastes, Koheleth reminds us that we are mortal. Life goes by pretty quickly. I can remember high school like it was yesterday, and I will be 64 in December. Life goes by at an astounding pace. And that means we should live it fully. Don't get to some point in your life and say, I wish I had done this, or I wish I had said that, or worst of all, I regret because life moves so very quickly, we need to value every day we are given. We need to fill every day that is ours with laughter, happiness, and discovery. You and I are given each new day to be of some service to our neighbors and those who need our help. We are called to fully embrace the gift of life that God has given us. Second, Make it a point to discover something new each day. It doesn't have to be big or huge or of the utmost importance. It can be something quite small or inconsequential. I'll give you an example. A while back, I was sitting on the porch reading, and I could smell rain coming. You can smell rain coming. The farmers taught me well. I remember as a kid learning to smell for rain. It's an unforgettable aroma. It's musky and pungent and very, very pleasant. Well, what I learned on Thursday, which is sermon writing day, is that that is due to a process called petrichor. Discovered in 1964 by Australian scientists, petrichor happens when rain falls on grasses and leaves and plants all of which produce oils. And as the rain moves in, the air becomes more humid and the oils are released into the air. Rain, which has no scent, pushes ozone down and that adds even more to petrichor. Now that may not mean much to you, though I will point out that no other congregation in town is receiving this information this morning. <laughs> but I learned something new on Thursday. What will you discover today? Third, and this one is tricky, we need to spend a little less time with technology and a little more time in reality. Technology is a good thing, don't get me wrong. But you can get too much of a good thing, trust me on that one. I had to have part of my stomach removed because I had learned that some things were just too good to be true. Spend some time outdoors. 
Take up a new hobby. Talk to a friend without texting. Enjoy the taste of a food you've never tried before. Read more. When you think you've read enough, read more. Learn to bake. Perfect your own chili recipe. We can become entirely too distracted by our gizmos and gadgets. They can actually make us less human. We were created as human beings with a need to be with other people. When we withdraw from people and become glued to a screen, we become less than what we were created to be. Finally, whenever you are led to believe that there is nothing new under the sun, remember this. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. God continually and constantly makes all things new. Things change every day. New discoveries are made every day. We have not yet begun to catch up on all that God is doing. God possesses this amazing power to transform everything, even us. God has the power to make us new, to change us from what we are to what God intended for us to be. God has the capacity to lead us into living compassionate, caring, kind-hearted lives. God is willing to teach us a new way, a better way, the way God had in mind when God breathed into us the breath of life. When we find ourselves slipping into the patterns of cynical living, when we find ourselves becoming judgmental and negative, when we can't seem to find meaning and purpose, God can help us turn that around. See I am making all things new, or there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing new? Really? Life is short, and there is so much to be discovered and enjoyed. Don't miss out on it. Not now, and not forevermore. Amen. As God's people called by God's voice, let us stand as we are able and affirm the faith we hold in common. The reconciling act of God in Jesus Christ exposes the evil in people as sin in the sight of God. In sin, people claim mastery of their own lives, turn against God and each other, and become exploiters and despoilers of the world. They lose their humanity in futile striving and are left in rebellion, despair, and isolation. Wise and virtuous men and women through the ages have sought the highest good in devotion to freedom, justice, peace, truth, and beauty. Yet all human virtue, when seen in the light of God's love in Jesus Christ, is found to be infected by self-interest and hostility. All people, good and bad alike, are in the wrong before God and helpless without God's forgiveness. Thus, everyone falls under God's judgment. No one is more subject to that judgment than those who assume that they are guiltless before God or morally superior to others. Please be seated. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. These gifts are entrusted to us for our own enjoyment and for the care of others. Working together and sharing together, we can begin to heal the world. Let us present our tithes and our offerings to God.
ever-giving, ever-loving God, receive our offerings of thanksgiving for all that you have done for us. May our tithes and offerings reach beyond these walls to bring hope and healing to our troubled world. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to our time for prayer this morning, please keep in your prayers Patty Swanson and Lisa Boyle, prayers for Nancy Irwin and her son, for Phil King as he travels to the Mayo Clinic, for the people of Haiti and Afghanistan who are just trying to survive in their desperate circumstances, for those battling cancer and the families supporting them, for cancer survivors who still live in fear and anxiety about it reoccurring. Are there prayers of thanksgiving or prayers of concern here in the sanctuary? Wendy. Yes. Francie. Max and Aiden. Steve and Keep all of these prayers on your hearts and on your lips as we move through the days ahead. Will you pray with me? God, our maker, you surround your people with favor and goodness. You have chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to inherit your promised kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, who heals the afflicted and sets the oppressed free. In your mercy, open our mouths in intercession as we bow at your feet on behalf of the church, the creation, and all those in need. Open your church to welcome and honor the poor, meeting their needs with faith-filled deeds of love and generosity. Uphold the land and those who labor to cultivate it, that both crops and people may be sustained by your love and overflow with the blessings of your generous provision. Establish justice for the poor and relief for the afflicted and compassionate care for the physically and mentally ill. May we respect the dignity of all who struggle, showing your kindness to those in need. Open our ears to hear the cry of the poor. Open our mouths to advocate for the afflicted. Open our hands to lift up those who are pressed down. Open our hearts to share generously with those who lack, especially those we remember now in our hearts. Bless the faithful and afflicted who have passed into your presence today to receive the rich inheritance you have prepared for them in your kingdom. And help us to remember with joy those of our congregation whose passing from this life to the next we will mark this week. Mary Sperry, Wallace Graves, Walter Stahlschmidt, Sarah Davies, Ed Engel Sr. As their witness and service inspired us, may their memory continue to bless us. And now, gracious God, Hear the prayers we offer from the silence of our hearts.
we trust in you to do us good. Through the excellent name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who still teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Life is short. It goes by quickly. Don't miss a day of it. Don't miss a moment of it. And don't get to the end of your life and say, oh, I regret. No regrets. Live. And go out living with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and companionship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.